like to say. So, even in the year, I'm like, you know, I'm going to take my newspaper. And it will be with the Zodiac Spat planning in your head. This is my year. The year of the monkey. What are we going? Yeah. 7 o'clock people with my comments. Of 7. Yep. On time. Okay. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. I feel we'll commence tonight's meeting. It's approached uh, 7 p.m. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Um, there are copies of the agenda circulated. You can please uh, take one with you or share if there's not to go around. Can I welcome everyone this evening to tonight's uh, final council meeting for this current term of councillors, and I thank you for attending, members of the gallery. Uh, following the agenda item, uh, we're up to number two, the apologies. There are no apologies tonight. We'll go to item three, disclosure of conflicts of interest. Any conflicts tonight from councillors? No conflicts, Mr. No conflicts, thank you, councillors. We'll go to item four, confirmation of the minutes of the previous council meeting. So moved. Move council seaters and second to councillor Williams. I put that to a vote. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you, councillors. And before I commence, I do need to mention to members of the gallery, I know there's not many here tonight, just make sure your mobile phones are switched off or on silent. Thank you. Uh, item five, public question time. In accordance with council's election period policy for 2016, public question time is suspended and not be held during the meeting. So no questions tonight. We'll go to consideration reports. Item six on the agenda. We'll Commencing with the first one, 6.1, .1, the yes, financial ma counselling program. Can I suspend no. standing orders prior to the first Council report? Williams has moved the suspension of standing orders. We have a seconder. I'll second that. Second to Council Lawrence. Okay, I'll put that to a vote. Suspend standing orders. All those in favour? Carry. Yeah, councillors, it's a tradition in the last meeting. The mayor is awarded with the happenings of the year, bounded in our book, booklet. <coughs> done that on behalf of the council, so I would like to present that to the mayor. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, councillors, if you have a few words to say, any of you, quite welcome to say that before we resume our standing orders about the mayor or anybody else. We want an early finish tonight, people. <laughs> I'll be quick. Keep it brief. One, because I don't have a voice, but I just want to say thank you for all your time that you've been here on Council. But most of all, it's been a great pleasure to come home <coughs> earlier, especially the last year that you've been the mayor. We've been very appreciative of that being a mother. So thank you. That's it. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to say a couple of words. Of course, um, it's been a long journey. For, for both of us, um, so end of an era. And congratulations on the successful completion of uh, the year as Mayor and of course taking us out to what we always wanted, which was the completion of our term. Um, and I just want to say that um, you know, over the, the journey, we've known each other for, what, since uh, 1993, even before then. Um, so it's been a long time when you think about the journey. Uh, I've enjoyed sparring with you. And we enjoyed the friendships that we've made across the journey and of course the cooperation across the council after how many years, you know, when you think about it. There are some very friendly, you know, sort of fond memories that I'll take out from our time together. And congratulations and uh, enjoy post-council life. Thank you, Stephen. 
Oliver. Councillor Walsh, I should say. Um, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, <coughs> first of all, Mr Mayor, um, congratulations on, um, <coughs> on your time um, as, um, as Mayor, but as a, um, um, more broadly, as a, um, um, as a council, I think, 18, um, 18 years, it's been for you. Um, and um, um, and um, for me, um, um, you know, you know, um, um, for a lot of your, um, you've you've achieved an awful lot in this city, and um, um, and um, um, your name is always longer. Um, um, we all knew. We all knew. Um, um, we all knew who the council of Fontana was, and when you're um, when, um, when you're not on council, and so um, in that regard, it's been um, um, it's been a privilege to um, to um, to um, work <coughs> for years on my own part. I'm um, not necessarily in the circumstances, but I would welcome it. May it be my um, vice council meeting, but I. Um, but I, but, um, but it's been a, um, it's been a good four. It's been a um, good four years, and um, um, and there are, and there are things which um, I guess which um, I've been able to do, um, which I'm um, which I'm I'm proud of being um, being able to do. It's been um, an eye-opener, perhaps, but um, it's um, it's shown. Um, um, it's, it's, it's somewhat it's shown lights of um, democracy, but perhaps um, um, that perhaps you didn't want to see. But um, um, but yeah, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. Uh, Councillor Wallace. Uh, Mr. Mayor Fontana. Um, yes, I'd also like to thank you uh, immediately for this conclusion, concluding here for this term, and your chairing has been excellent and uh, far less sloppy and indulgent than mine, and it was uh, the right time, certainly, for you to come and close your uh, 18 years on councils, community service, service to so many clubs, so many associations. Um, we did hear at the Merrill event the full stats. They were scary, the amount of meetings chaired, the amount of events tended. It is a <coughs> lifetime contribution yep. to the city that we're closing. So I certainly like to thank you for that lifetime effort. I know also uh, the toll that takes on our family as well. Um, and uh, wish you all the best with your newfound freedom. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor McCarthy. Mr Mayor. Um, we're scaring everyone away. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to um, acknowledge that, uh, that uh, whilst um, we've, we've been uh, nine councillors, um, some of us aren't recontesting. I'd like to acknowledge um, both yourself, uh, Mr Mayor, for your service this year, um, and, uh, and also all councillors that aren't recontesting um, the elections this year, and um, to thank them for their service. Um, it is a, a big decision to make to, um, to decide to not stand, um, and, uh, and sometimes it's one of those decisions which um, uh, you know, people are clear about and sometimes um, it becomes clearer once they make that decision. Um, and so I'd like to thank all councillors who aren't standing um, for their contribution to council on behalf of the community um, and also to those councillors that are restanding um, to wish them all the best. And uh, if they don't return to this chamber, um, that includes myself, um, all the best with what, uh, what comes up next. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Campbell. Okay. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd like to also um, thank you for uh, the um, manner in which you have uh, uh, acted in your, your role as Mayor, efficient, uh, diligent um, and um, thorough and very um, hard working. So uh, I think we, we can, we've all been uh, testimony to uh, to your commitment in the role, and I'd like to um, like to thank you. And it's a, a, a nice way to to end what has been um, 
for someone who's, this is my first term on council and probably my own, well, my only term, um, it uh, is an interesting beast to local government. And, um, and uh, for myself, I really did not know what to expect because I just uh, put my hand up uh, to represent the community, nothing more, nothing less. And, um, and whilst there have been lots of highs, there have also been lots of challenges. And, um, and I think uh, I, I do wish the, uh, the new council, hopefully it will start its term without all the, the stuff that we had to deal with. Um, and uh, really took up a lot of time, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the one regret. Well, not a regret so much, but the frustration. Mr Mayor, uh, a lot of time and energy was spent on stuff that, you know, most of us didn't have anything to do with. But um, so hopefully all that's been cleared up now. And I, uh, I do hope that the new council is able to really focus on, um, on community needs. There are lots of challenges ahead. Um, I, for one, hope that I made some contribution. I don't know. Um, I, I certainly learned a lot. Um, about our democracy. I certainly learned a lot about the model of uh, local government and uh, it has many, many flaws, <laughs> Mr Mayor, and I don't think the state government's review has gone far enough, mm. quite frankly. I think um, I, I, I aspire to the Whitlam model of two tiers of government, maybe, <laughs> is uh, the best way to go. And I think the biggest problem we have with local government, from my humble uh, opinion, Mr Mayor, is that it's, there's not enough scrutiny. There's uh, not enough Councilor. media scrutiny. Thank you. I think that's and another forum one thing for that. that we could do, that would be a great thing. But thank anyway, you. that's for the next council and the residents to, thank you, uh, to uh, ponder. Thank you. Councillor Lee. Uh, thank you. Um, I won't repeat what Councillor Vanilla said. Suffice to say, I agree with uh, the vast majority of those statements. Uh, <laughs> but I did want to congratulate you on you, Mr Mayor, on both serving out this successful term, but also serving the Council conscientiously for the, for the um, 13 years on the Council? 18. 18 years on the Council. Um, so I um, do congratulate you on that. And uh, much as what we do as councillors is it can be compared to an iceberg. What you see on top uh, is just that 15% of the vast bulk of the work is actually done behind the, work, behind the scenes, talking to residents and liaising with clubs and pensioners and so forth. So uh, to you, thank you, and to my fellow councillors, thank you for your time as well for the last four years. And uh, I do wish to see some of your return, uh, if uh, I'm willing, if, uh, if um, the will of the uh, residents are on my side. And I do look forward to uh, work uh, with everyone uh, in the near future. Thank you. And first of all, thank you, Mr. May, for, for, your, um, for your third term as May um, and for this year. And um, thank you for your work and um, your dedication um, this year in, um, in, um, in assisting the councillors and assisting the council. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to also thank, because um, we're not going to see them again, we'll probably um, we'll see them in a, um, in a, I'm sure in a personal capacity, but not in a, in, in a council capacity, is, is that um, thank um, Councillor Cedars for his years of service. Um, I think it's 17, um, yep. 17 years of service. So thank you for your, um, obviously, um, you. your advice and contribution over the years that you've made to the council and to the city. And also the other two, um, uh, uh, the other councillors that will not be presenting themselves for the next council election, Councillor Walsh, and uh, thank you for your four years, and it's been great, and also working with you, and also um, Councillor Villella, it's also been great to um, share the work with you in a, in a common ward that we, um, we both um, represented. Um, we don't know whether we're going to be here in, um, after the election, so um, I'd like to extend a, a thank you to all the other councillors that are on the council and to the officers for, for the work that they've done mm -hmm. these four mm -hmm. years. And, the officers, um, yes. yes. And um, hopefully uh, we'll still be around uh, in the next few months. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Greco. I might just make some close your mark. Look, first of all, thank you very much for, um, <coughs> for those comments. I only need, it's a long journey. It's a long journey. It's been a, a journey that's... Um, Taking its toll. But there's been some wonderful experiences over the journey. The friendships, the community, the support and encouragement I've had from my family and you people. 
It's never easy. It's, it's, it's a thankless job we do. It really is. And it's contrary to what people say and write about you, we actually do it for the community, not for ourselves. And we've had the support, I think, from you guys, from uh, not only this, this current year, but the whole term, but the 18 years that I've served with the CEOs, the staff and other councillors. It's been wonderful. It really has. I wouldn't have changed it. I would have liked things to have been a little bit different. But local government is a beast in itself. We never know what to expect, <laughs> what to come up, what's going to come up. But more importantly, we've dealt with it and gone with the job as the community expected. It's been a pleasure to work for and with our community. I'm sure all of you agree. Can I thank Stephen for your support in the country over the years? We go back over 20 plus years and we've had our, we've had our yes. blues. But the main thing is what we've done is what we believe to be best for community. Also, Oliver, thanks for your support as Deputy Mayor uh, for the period you're on um, in four years, and best of luck for, you, for, you, for your future as well. And uh, also to Angela, thanks for your support uh, and, uh, more importantly, your um, contributions over, over the four years, not just for my moment or two, but also four years. People tend to sort of forget about, you know, the fact that, you know, you're only a council, but you're, you're more than that. You're actually an advocate on a, on a range of issues. Best of luck to Tim, Gaetano, uh, Bo, Trent and Julie uh, in upcoming elections. I'm sure we're going to need some experience back next year, uh, in the next term, and I hope uh, I wish you all the best for, for, for the future there as well. Um, but more importantly, I, I take away from me some friendships. Okay. And that's what I remember. Thank you very much, Colts. We're all happy to be here. Thank you very much, Colts. We're all happy to be here. Thank you very much, Colts. We're all happy to be here. Item we're considering now is 6.1 financial council program. We have a recommendation there. So I want to move that, please. Happy to move that. Move Council Leader, seconder. Seconder second Council Williams. Council Leader, should speak. Uh, yes, just very briefly, this uh, uh, financial council program is an update on the Kildonan agreement that we had. Um, this uh, program was uh, implemented in July 2014 following a review of the various funding streams by uh, financial counselling uh, services by uh, Consumer Affairs Victoria. Um, now, this, under this uh, agreement, um, we have expanded um, the counselling program to cover a variety of at-risk groups, including um, women fleeing from domestic violence and uh, those in, from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander <coughs> backgrounds. Um, we do note that uh, this program is a rolling program and uh, there will be some further report down the track. Um, so this is a, a foreknoting and no doubt uh, this program will continue to serve the clientele that at mo most risk in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor Williams, anything to add? Um, just very quickly to say that it's a great program and it is actually going directly to the most vulnerable in our community. So that's all I have to say, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor. If there's no further comments, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Next item is 6.2, the Age Friendly Victoria Declaration. So I'll move that, please. Move um, Councillor Lee. That. Second to Councillor Walsh. Councillor Lee. Uh, yes, I also have a slight okay. amendment, amendment as well. That on uh, so the screen. that was circulated to officers and staff and councillors earlier. Yep. So point two, to write to the Minister for Health and Ageing uh, uh, and Minister for Planning urging the State Government to initiate a review of the Planning Environment Act to incorporate <coughs> universal design and access principles in order to assist elderly persons to age in place. So thank you for mm. uh, accepting that. Um, this Age Friendly City Declaration is a joint initiative by the Victorian Councils and the State Government. Uh, it does look at supporting our ageing population. Um, let's face it, um, you know, we're all on a one-way street um, on this, and uh, one day we'll need some of that support ourselves. More importantly, what it does do, it um, uh, asks Council to reaffirm and sign the Age Friendly Declaration alongside 10 other Councils. Uh, on my second point, uh, one of the things uh, from my own professional clinical experience is that there is often, often a disconnect between um, high density living in particular and universal accent design principles. So doorways are not designed wide enough to, to accommodate wheelchairs and those uh, ambulance stretches for when elderly people do fall down or get sick. Um, there is also insufficient um, anchorage points for people to put in uh, grab rails for showers to accommodate uh, elderly and frail people. And I think this is a, a great uh, gap that needs to be plugged in mm -hmm. terms of getting Victoria to become an age-friendly, uh, to get uh, councils like Darwin to become age-friendly cities, in that we do need to ensure 
that the Planning Environment Act regulations do also reflect the needs of our ageing population, particularly on those two principles of universal design and access. I'll leave it there, Mr Mayor. Others may wish to speak Thank you, Councillor well. Lee. Uh, Councillor Walsh, a second. Do you wish to speak? Um, um, the only to say, um, only to say that it's um, um, it, it's refreshing to see um, to um, to see that um, um, the, the pretty much every other um, council in Victoria has um, um, has signed up to has signed up to this and um, um, and um, you know demonstrates and it speaks. <coughs> Um, and it's um, and it speaks volumes about um, 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 about what um, about what we owe to um, to the aging um, to the aging population. And, you know those who have um, um, you know those who um, we've talked about community service tonight, but um, you know those who have given real community service. Um, over many, many years, many of them, um, and so I think it's a nice, um, a nice time to say that it's a little bit of Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gregor. Yeah, just very quickly, I'd just like to say that I fully endorse um, this, um, and us signing this declaration. I, I think it's worthy to say that out of all the councils in Victoria, I would say that Darabin Council is the most a uh, the most age friendly councils out of many of the other councils. Mm. Why is that? Uh, the simple reason is that the uh, Darabin Council provides extensive services and um, and strategies in terms of um, providing for our aging community and also not only providing for our aging community but also assisting our aging community to fully be fully participate in in um, in our. In, in the city's life, so it's really fitting that we're signing this, but uh, we're way out there relative to many other councils, and I, I'm sure there's a lot more work that we can do, but we're starting from a good base. Thank you, Councillor Greco. If there's no further to speak, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Next item is our 6.3. Happy to move that, Mr Mayor. Project Application yeah. Support Recreational Victoria Committee Sports Infrastructure Fund. Councillor Cedars has moved. There's a small That's amendment it. there. Yep. Councillor um, McCarthy seconded. Happy to second that. Yep. Thank you. Councillor Cedars. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much <coughs> and thank you, yep. Councillor McCarthy, for, for seconding. I will just, um, just for grammatical purposes, just point out uh, that perhaps after and from 4 19, 19 and a half, it'd be changed to two rather than will. Yeah. Um, <coughs> just as a, a statement of intent on the part of the Council. Um, so basically, the you know, second part of the, the motion, mm -hmm. now the third rather, mm -hmm. is uh, a statement of fact that we're in caretaker mode, and of course it will be the responsibility of the new council to uh, run the rule over this particular item. But the point is that um, contingent within the report in terms of the state government funding associated with this, Mr Mayor, is our contribution that will be required to be met. And so the specified amount is there for all to see, of 419,500. So, with the, the coming of, of the um, new council, they'll have an opportunity to assess that um, for consideration within the budget context. And so I suppose it's more of an administrative uh, keeping nature in, in terms of this as an enabling recommendation that's here before us. So I'm, I'm happy on that basis to, to, to move um, thank you. with that in mind. Thank you, Councillor Cedars. Councillor McCarthy. Um, thank you, Councillor Cedars, for clarifying that. I think it's, um, it's, it's worth noting. Um, and I just wanted to speak specifically to the two projects, or one in particular which I've had some involvement with, which is of course the, um, the proposed sports field lighting system at Pitcher Park. Um, and councillors might be aware that Pitcher Park has increased significantly in, uh, in the demand for the site. Um, the growth of, uh, of, of Parkside um, Football Club in particular has been extraordinary, and uh, the Cricket Club and the the natural thing is, of course, an extension of the operating hours, which requires an upgrade to the lighting system. I won't speak about Bandura Park, um, which I'm less familiar with, but I would say that uh, with the sort of investment that's involved in getting um, 
the lights, the sports field lighting up to scratch to meet the requirements of the, and I think it's over a thousand um, uh, people now involved in some way through the Parkside Club, um, I could be corrected if I'm wrong, um, and a significant number needing to have access late into the evening. Um, we do have a significant council contribution which is of course referred to there, about um, half of that would be going to the Pitcher Park project, but in return um, if we do find a successful application with SRV and we have been re advised that we can go to the full stage now, um, we will be looking at $200,000 coming from the state government and that's I think a, a fair and reasonable co-investment model um, and something we should get behind. So yes it will be a decision for the next council to commit that money in the next year's budget but um, the intent is there, the intent is clear, the work has been done, these applications have in fact already been submitted. Um, to, to keep the ball rolling so we meet the deadlines and of course um, a positive response so far from the State Government which is great. Thank you Councillor McCarthy. Any further speakers? If not, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried councillors. Thank you. Next item is 06.4 Sporting Fees, Charges, Occupancy Agreement Policy Implementation Update. We have a recommendation there. Um, I've got actually, I've actually Can got you stand a... Councillor Walsh? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, sorry Mr Mayor. Um, I've got a um, I've got a question. Um, um, it's um, it's in relation to, um, in relation to this. Um, where does it say um, the definition of um, um, of um, community of community um, the, um, community benefit? I, is there um, is there a def is there a definition of community benefit? Who are you asking, Councillor? Uh, I, um, through you, um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the um, to the officer that just talks about um, um, it's not part of the resolution, Councillor Walsh. So, uh, it's well, um, so yeah, if you can respond yeah, through the mayor, um, <coughs> you might have to give a bit more context to that because it's not part of the resolution. <coughs> um, no, um, no, um, no, Mr. Mayor, but it is. Um, but it is in the um, but it is in the attached um, um, in the attached um, yeah. um, strategy. Um, yeah, I, I can broadly talk about you know the fees and charges. One of the things that we talked about is diversity and uh, bringing everybody apart. Yes. In participation, so those uh, strategies define the benefit. So whether I cannot give an answer to whether that's been defined within the fees and charges, but certainly we have uh, definitions within other strategies and open space strategies about participation being defined as a, you know, that subset of that is a community benefit. Yeah. Okay, we have a recommendation here. Councillors? Anyone? Councillor Lee has moved. Seconder. Happy to second. Okay. Councillor Below. Councillor Lee, you wish to speak? Uh, very briefly, um, this is an update of the sporting fees and uh, charges mm -hmm. policy. Um, it's a six month review. Uh, there were some initial issues earlier when the policy was first introduced on the impact of micro clubs and how they might um, otherwise survive or not uh, under the new fee structure. However, um, I wish to thank officers who work tirelessly with those smaller clubs to ensure their ongoing survival and the ability to maintain and attract um, players and, and members. I do note that um, this policy makes some positive contributions to both participation of women in sport but also mm. participation of people of all abilities into sports, recreation and city of Darabin as well. So it's a win-win for everybody concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor Below, anything to add? Nothing to add, Mr. Mason. I've got to, um, I've got a couple of things I'd like to speak on. Please do, yeah. Councillor Walsh. Um, thanks, um, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, in, um, in relation to this, I'm happy to speak, um, speak for it. I have had, um, those of you who know, I have had my, um, reservations, um, about aspects of this, um, um, of this, um, of this policy. I, um, and, um, and, you know, I, did ask about the, um, the language, and I guess I've never been comfortable with community benefit because I don't know. Because I guess the I, I guess the point that I would make is how how does one um, quantify um, community benefit? 
um, many of these clubs would um, um, may not meet the um, may not meet the um, the university targets um, that we that we set. And, you know, yes, there is a reason why we have that, but that's not to say that they um, that there is no community benefits. I'm uncomfortable with, with that um, wording, but um, um, but um, but yeah, I'm happy to wait to go through it. Thank you, Council Walsh. If there's no further speak, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That item is carried. Thank you, Councillors. Next item is our 6.5 Springthorpe Estate Residential Parking Permit Policy. A recommendation there. Councillor Greco is moved. Yeah. Seconder. Have a second, Mr. Councillor Greco. Councillor Greco, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I'll just quickly go through what this report uh, refers to. Um, as we know, that in the Springthorpe Estate, which is a relatively new estate relative to, to other areas of, of Darabin, that there have always been um, parking issues associated with that. Um, that estate there. The parking issues emanate from the, um, the, the width of the roads, um, given that um, some of the roads are very narrow, and, uh, and also because of a situation with um, the Trobe University. As the Trobe University um, student population has expanded, um, what has happened is that there's been an overflow of, um, of students, and the students are obviously parking in, in and around the estate, which is causing a few problems for, uh, for the local residents there. Um, we've had some sort of um, um, ad hoc approaches to try to um, address some of the parking issues there, uh, and what we've found in those ad hoc approaches is that um, you may fix up the parking situation in one particular street, and then what happens is that the, the parking problems tend to then migrate to another or the other end of the street or around the corner or in other areas of the estate there. So, um, so what's needed, as, as it's been proposed here in this report, is a, um, is a strategic approach, an approach that looks at the overall parking situation in the Springthorpe Estate and try to come up with um, creative solutions involving the community in those solutions. It's no use that council goes out there and, and lays down the law and, and, um, and just applies um, parking um, uh, new parking laws, it, has to, it needs to buy in the, uh, buy in the community in, in arriving at um, feasible and, and workable solutions. And I think what's been proposed here in the report is, to, um, is a series of steps where the council works together with the Springthorpe Corporate, um, Owners Corporation, which is basically the body corporate for the Springthorpe estate, and uh, working with the um, residents there uh, via a series of um, workshops and a, and a series of consultations um, in terms of trying to arrive at practical, workable solutions that then can be applied um, uniformly across the, uh, across the whole estate. Um, so this is only the start, so a lot of work needs to be done. I just note here for, for the sake of councillors is that um, any, um, any parking strategy that, that is developed will come back to council for endorsement and, um, and so we can Rest assured that the that the future council will be able to see what the community and what the seconds. council has come up with, and uh, so the the groundwork is laid here for, for further work to be done and hopefully for some practical solutions to be found. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Bellow, anything to Yeah, just very quickly, <coughs> Mr. Mayor. I think um, the the issues in Springthorpe in terms of parking, uh, it, it's not not exclusive. To, to Springthorpe. But what we do have um, at the Springthorpe uh, estate is a highly organised community. And um, and they, you know, they kind of work together to identify the issues and work well with council. But the parking pressures are uh, throughout, you know, reservoir. So um, I think what we've got here is an organised community, attention done to an issue and something might get done about it. But my concern is also, you know, this kind of approach, uh, I think the council needs to take a bit more of a leadership role here because there are a lot of communities out there and we, we hear about it when we have the on planning committee where you've got streets and areas where they've been uh, with lots of apartments, etc., and they're having the full effect of parking problems, traffic problems. So, um, and to me, it, 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 there's a bit of an inequity in terms of the raising and organising um, of the issues and getting some action done. So I congratulate the residents of Springthorpe, but this is an issue that is not 
just a sprint corp issue. <coughs> there are parking and traffic issues emerging throughout that area, throughout Bandura and Reservoir, and across across the um, across the municipality. Um, and, and it would be good to see a bit more uh, equity, equity in terms of, from council's perspective, in terms of addressing these um, really real issues. And they should not just be coming to council when there's a planning application because this is one of the issues that frustrates them. This is a big issue beyond Springthorpe. It might be a template. It might, it might operate as a template, how to um, maybe engage with other, other communities, but it's a big issue and it's not going to go away. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Villain. If there's no further speak, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Next item is our 6.6 .6 recruitment policy. Um, before, McCarthy. before anyone moves um, the, uh, the recommendation or an alternative for Mr Mayor, I'll just ask, because um, this hasn't come to a briefing, um, I don't believe, um, uh, whether this this item could safely be deferred into the next council at their first meeting, um, given, given the November time frame that's referred to in the report. Yeah. Uh, councillors, you know, uh, unfortunately the last uh, policy, it's annual requirement to approve it annually, uh, it's a legislation. So we did that on the 23rd of November 2015. So, you know, just let it, we let it go till at least ten and a half months now. Mm -hmm. The next year we should be able to get it in September and go like that. But th there's a requirement under the legislation to do it within one year. That's where we are. So, if, just to be clear, because I'm just conscious of um, adopting yes. policies in the t caretaker period, yeah. um, uh, I suppose that's my primary question, in fact, is can we actually adopt a policy in the caretaker period um, in, this, in this way? Uh, yeah, through Mr. Mayor, it's not a major policy, it's just a design of the so it is okay to adopt it tonight. We are not changing from the policy previously, it is all of them handled by the council. So that's the issue. Anybody needs to change this? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the new policy, no. No. No, no. I, I, understand, I understand that Councillor Lee has already foreshadowed an amendment, yes. um, so I'm keen to hear that again, and I may have an additional amendment then um, on the basis, but I, I'm just was wary of the, the deferment. Yes, thank you. I did have a very slight amendment, which I said glad to um, officers and councillors earlier. So um, on page nine of the policy under section five, third paragraph, um, <coughs> just want to add the word council will seek and obtain quotes rather than yep. just obtain quotes. That's fine. Uh, second for that? I'm happy to second that. Um, but I would also ask if a third point could be added um, just from the purposes of, uh, uh, of uh, transparency and, and good, good, good practice, which is um, that uh, the procurement policy be presented to the new council um, for their review um, upon election given the time frame that we're considering this. We're just happy with that. If you can put yes. the words together and give it to our sure. take it. Thanks, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lee, you have the floor. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. As uh, was explained just a minute ago, yeah. this is uh, uh, not a new policy, it's an amendment to our existing policy. It's in the refresher, it's an update, and it's required to do so every 12 months as per the legislative requirements. The procurement policy sets about um, the Council's framework in terms of procuring uh, goods and services from our local community and also all our, our local organisations. Uh, we do need to bear in mind that Council is a very heavy provider of uh, services, sometimes the only provider of services in our local area uh, for various reasons. The reason why I put up um, the uh, local business framework is that we do need to um, seek to support our local um, businesses and particularly those uh, indigenous corporations and companies. Um, when this policy was first introduced a few couple of years ago, uh, I did um, make a special mention of that, and I do want to seek that uh, to have that extended. Uh, whereas the original um, amendment uh, mentions that the council will obtain quotes, uh, I see that as a, a slightly passive voice. I do want the council to be proactive in terms of our employing our indigenous services and uh, uh, companies from um, with indigenous backgrounds to uh, supply council services and goods, and hence the addition of the word seek and obtain. Hopefully that would uh, give council officers greater impetus to actively seek out those organisations and ask them to participate in the council procurement process. Um, there will be other, uh, others may wish to speak on the others uh, part of the amendment, uh, but I'll just leave that for now. Thank you. 
Councillor Lee for um, including that point. Um, just to reiterate, I'm not aware of any change in the Minister's Office Council Report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Lee, for um, including that point. Um, I actually think this is one of the most um, important count, um, policies that Council has in its suite um, because it's one of the policies that dictates the flavour of purchasing decisions, and, uh, and that can actually have a, a major influence on the economic output of Council um, in terms of the investment that occurs in the city of Darabin and in our surrounding municipalities. And so when we talk about procurement, we're actually talking about uh, the, the weighting through which um, Council will give, and in the case of the Darabin Plus area, in local purchasing policy, environmental purchasing, uh, the weighting that Council gives in relation to different aspects of purchasing, not just price. And this is important because it has flow-on effects through our local economy, but also has um, uh, impacts both on our ethical standing and also our environmental standing. Um, but one point which I'd like to draw to Council's attention, and it's just through the great work of the Inner Northern LEN, the Local Learning and Employment Network, and I would uh, disclose I operate, work for a separate LEN um, in another area, but not this one, but I would note um, that the Inner Northern LEN has been doing their Jobs for Youth campaign. They've been encouraging councils to look at their procurement policies and actually find ways through which um, councils can generate um, employment opportunities for young people in their in their own operations um, through identifying that as a, essentially a youth dividend in their procurement. Now, that doesn't cost councils anything more um, than what they currently pay. It's about putting back onto the provider or the supplier that requirement. Um, we don't, as far as I can see, have anything significant that commits us in that space, and uh, and that's a shame. Um, and I'd like to see, uh, obviously with a procurement policy um, that we have a good look at that, um, or that the next council has a good look at that. So I'd send that signal pretty strongly that that's something that I think we've missed as a council, um, and that's a shame. Um, but uh, there's, there's hope with a new council that they might pick that issue up, uh, because uh, we've got youth unemployment, um, I think, Time, the last call, about 30 per cent in reservoir. So Thank you. Um, pretty appalling. Okay. Councillor Gregor? Yeah, yes, Mr. Mayor. Look, I, I'd like to offer a, a further amendment to, to this uh, um, has this been circulated? Uh, it has been circulated, but uh, it's an amendment uh, based on what's been circulated, but it's a slight variation to it because of, of what uh, what's already appears there. So what I'd like to propose is that in relation to the third point, if it's okay with the mover and the seconder, is that the procurement policy and and the and a, and a social procurement strategy uh, oops, be presented <laughs> at, essentially at the first council meeting um, um, in um, in November, so it's not it's, it's not what's there. I'm actually proposing something completely separate. Uh, we can't do it. Can't but I'm proposing it. something completely separate, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm not sure if you were listening to what I was saying. I was saying. listening. Yep. I was. You've been advised already today in relation to what you're proposing to do and the information given by your officers. But continue. So what I'm proposing, if it's okay with the mover and the second, that, that if we could have the previous wording up so that I could show where the insertion um, could be could be made. that after the words, the procurement policy, this is in the third point, uh, and a social procurement strategy be presented to the new council for noting at, the, at its first ordinary meeting. That's the amendment that I'd like to put forward. Before you speak, Councillor Greg, I'm getting some advice from the city in relation to that, and whether it can or can't be done. Can't no, if we can do it in early next year, but saying that first meeting, it's already identified as we talk about, there'll be a lot of training to the councillors before they decide this. So we will uh, time it early next year, but uh, not in the first meeting, as it should be at the anyway, a structure to be meeting. Could I, could, I, could, I, um, could, I, could I propose to... to hang on, hang on. No. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yep. the Fine. Officer first, before I have questions. <coughs> yep. Ms. Stevens, in relation to that. Yeah, three, Mr. Mayor. Um, the procurement strategy is almost asking for a policy of council. Um, it's probably not appropriate to make that type of decision so while we're a caretaker. So, so could, could we hear that? Something that we have to wait until after the election um, and potentially as a better solution. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I didn't hear. Could we hear that again, please? Could we hear that again from the director? The procurement strategy is, is almost asking for a policy to be developed by officers. Um, because we're in the caretaker period, it probably would be seen as an inappropriate decision to be making today, and it should be left for the new council to make after the election in relation to the strategy. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. 
Maybe you can clarify something for me. Um, do we have a procurement strategy? No. So we you can't really present it. We have a policy strategy. Yeah, but there's no procurement strategy. So technically, it can't be presented to the new council for no. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, I apologise profusely for that. Um, so technically, it can't be presented to a new council for noting at its first ordinary meeting because there isn't one. Yeah. Okay. So not only that, if there, there isn't one, so that, that doesn't make any, it, it's illogical. It can't be considered. So, so Mr. Mayor, if I, just to fail to understand something, is that I'm not proposing an actual uh, policy, because uh, I understand the point about that a policy cannot be uh, considered in a caretaker uh, period. All I'm proposing is that as part of this policy, which is also another contradiction, because if we're, if we're, if we're, if we're approving a policy in a caretaker period, I think this is the point that Councillor Lella is getting at. No, no, the, no? Point I'm making, the point I'm making, Councillor, is that we don't have a procurement strategy. Right. So it can't be presented to the new council for noting. Okay, Councillor Gregor, you want to finish off your yeah, reasoning? Yeah, so what I was going to say is that uh, this is the procurement policy that we have in place. In the procurement policy, there's a clause there that talks about um, social procurement, um, that the, the, what it says about social procurement, it doesn't actually elaborate what the strategy would be. And I'm just complimenting uh, what I'm trying to put as, a, as an amendment is to complement the, the policy with a, with a strategy that, that would come back to Council for, um, for, for future endorsement. It's not actually, it's not actually um, uh, endorsing a, a policy per se or endorsing a strategy. It's actually requesting that a, that a strategy come, come to Council in order to expand on the, on, the procurement, on the social procurement aspect of this policy. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Gregor. You've already been explained that it can't happen. It can't happen, and I actually need to actually refer back to our local law. Move in an amendment, section 30.3. Yeah. An amendment must not be directly opposite to the motion. So technically, this that doesn't complement the motion. It's actually in conflict with it. And also, I think in our council, said that there's no strategy. The reason this is directly under the local government act, we require a policy which encompasses everything we do. It's a, it's, you see, uh, if we want a strategy council, they should, they should outline it, what it is, you know, what part of it and what it is. Then the council can perhaps adopt the strategy. But uh, we need to be careful. This is the everyday job of the council under the Local Government Act. It has got parameters within which we have to develop a policy. You can have additional strategy for whatever, but those, those details have to be worked out with the councillors on the RSS strategy to adopt it in the future. But directly, we only have a policy. We need to adopt that today. Thank you, Mr. Deb. Uh, that's been explained. It's up to the move and second and anything to consider. I think you just ruled it out, haven't you? you just, yes. I've pretty much ruled it out, so yeah. Then it's not accepted, so it's slightly there. Okay, we've had uh, speakers to, uh, for, for the matter. There's no further speakers or discussion. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, councillors. Next item is uh, 6.7, the annual report for 2015 and 16. Uh, yeah. Not Councillor Walsh, Councillor Lawrence. I'll second it with an amendment. Okay, the amendment is. The amendment, Lawrence. the amendment um, uh, is a 0.7 in the, in the recommendation uh, that refers to information note 36. I believe it's a circular. Is it circular? No. 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 So we need to get it up. So. It's been submitted. It will be given to the minute taker so it can go up. And councillors have an opportunity to read it.
been included, we have a mover, Oliver Walsh, and second Council Lawrence, we've got amendment. Okay, Councillor Walsh? Um. And Councillor Lawrence will explain. Explain first Councillor Walsh and why you've included. Speak um, to the amendment. Um, yeah, could, um, I would, um, maybe I could just yeah, right. speak to it. Yeah, I'll just speak to it if yeah. it has been accepted. Um, the amendment uh, we've got here is relates to the annual report rather than the financial report and it refers to an additional note 36, which is part of a description on related party tra transactions. Specifically, this note um, refers to the calculation of the total remuneration package as at uh, the 12th of May 2016. And um, that additional information, um, uh, from my memory on the audit committee, has been um, an additional um, description of the financial package that's been included all the way along. Um, for some reason, it's not in the financial uh, final financial pages. And the reason I remember this is because um, it's been noted by the chair that um, we have noted this, uh, I suppose, historic change point in the remuneration package within the audit papers um, many times. So this is. Um, uh, giving that same information that's been included in auditors, auditing reports previously, but in the annual report. Uh, just as a point of order, uh, Mr Mayor, I think the apostrophe should be before... Oh, yes. yes. Yes, there's a few <laughs> yeah. things. I think that that's been considered in relation to uh, reflect on um, accuracy of the reports and also transparency too. Uh, Before the move, yep. I, I just I just have some um, a question regarding the, the the amended or amendment or the additional point I should say. Can we just get some officers advice because this is actually an amendment to the text of the annual report provided by Councillor Lawrence. Um, once we sign off on this, that is the annual report. So yep. if we can just get a, advice yep. Yep. through from our officers about whether the the text that is proposed there is is accurate. Compliance. Um, I think we need to be really careful here. Uh, okay, through you, Mr. Mayor. The, the information is correct. Um, Councillor Lawrence was correct in saying that we can't add it to the financial report because it's already been through and been signed off by Council and the Auditor General. Um, however, we can put a, a comment in the actual annual report. Um, for transparency reasons, it has been in the previous um, Council uh, annual report. And, uh, the total remuneration package that is stipulated there at 358 is true and correct um, as at the 12th of May 2016. So the reporting period, um, the uh, CEO performance review was done after June, uh, therefore we need to report what it was um, prior to June. So, so just a, a process question, just so that everyone's clear and anyone in the gallery is clear as well. Um, the reason why 0.7 wasn't included, can we just get an explanation as to why this is being added now? Was it an oversight or what, what's the reason for this to be added in the chamber? Just because it's the first time we've seen this, we haven't had it circulated to us at all. Um, I do believe that it was uh, an oversight in the uh, Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, another, again, just a technical question. I know that the report has already been submitted to Minister of Government on the 15th of September. Mm -hmm. Could you speak up, um, The report has the annual report has already been submitted to the Minister of Local Government on the 15th of September. So I'm just wondering, with that amendment, does that mean we need to centre uh, uh, the subsequent amendment as well, and therefore make it publicly available on the website and so forth as well? Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes, we do send it back to the Minister of Local the annual report that uh, gets publicised to the community doesn't occur until after 
tonight's meeting anyway, so um, we go out and then we put it all together uh, in the book form and on the internet and things like that. So we do have an opportunity um, to send it back to the Minister for Slide Adjustment. Councillor Walsh has moved. Councillor Lyons has seconded. Uh, Councillor Walsh, you wish to speak? Um, yes. Um, the, look, I think the annual, the annual report, um, you know, um, paints a, um, I guess, pa paints a um, good picture and um, demonstrates um, the, um, <coughs> the many achievements which, uh, which we have, um, which we have, um, we have achieved this year. And, um, we've been, um, we've been, we have been recognised um, by Big Health um, um, and um, recognised in two different categories at um, the LG um, at the LG Pro Awards um, <coughs> and um, so um, so so that so that demonstrates and um, um, to, um, that our one. Um, um, that our officers um, have been um, um, have been doing um, doing some um, so, um, some good work, and um, and I think now it's probably to, um, I'd like to um, um, I'd like to um, just it, just because of the um, just because of the awards that we have, um, but I'd like to acknowledge the um, you know the teams which um, um, have, um, of staff have been involved in. Um, um, in those um, in those programs, um, the um, um, the annual report also paints our um, also um, goes through our um, our, um, our our financial um, report, and we we are in a good um, we are in a good fi um, good financial um, position with um, 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 with um, with with pretty much no debt and. Um, and um and Boeing's and, um, so, um so um so yeah um I'd like to um you know I'd like to I think that should should be um noted as well put into um uh, context. Thank you, Councillor Walsh. Councillor Lawrence, a second you wish to speak? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. I think it's been covered. Any other speakers? Yeah. Councillor Lee. I just uh, just uh, again just a further question just to mm. clarify on that note thirty six point. Um, I note that uh, Councillor Lawrence has already made provisions for the uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer salary package to be uh, to be named. Uh, but is it normal practice for the councillors' uh, allowances and the mayoral allowance to be named in there as well? Because at the moment it's, it's buried in the report, in part two of the report, it's not spelled out. So, what's the what's the normal practice if we're doing one? Or should we do all the others as well? Mm. I think what's in the report is what we've normally done. Is how it's been reported in previous years. Um, as we just mentioned, the only thing that has been excluded from this year's is the note under the CEO salary. Okay. okay. So that's fine. I think it's best that it requires us to provide the information to. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay, Councillor Williams. I just go into the report. I just want to ask can you, through you, Mr. Mayor, if the officers can elaborate the high amount? Wouldn't that be with the CEO, the Razia Devs, pay? I don't understand the question. There's two amounts there, 370000 and 390000 Yes, yes, yes. Previous year. Yes. It's two different years on top. Just That's a different. Mr. Mayor, through you. Just, um, one of the reasons uh, that has been uh, the practice of the Audit Committee previous year to have the uh, package described in different manners, including the standard range, is that we had a historical event of a change, um, a down decrease, that affects your annual reporting. So this information doesn't contradict the information that's there, but it pinpoints the actual uh, the historical point where the change was made, and I think that's additional information that the community should have. Thank you for adding that, Councillor Lawrence. Okay, if there's no further... Councillor <laughs> Just for the point of clarity, just want to understand whether that um, additional point that's um, been put there by Councillor Lawrence, which I understand is uh, publicly available information anyway, right. whether um, whether the audit committee has um, 
whether that has gone through the audit committee or not, or, or whether the audit committee has um, just given through, advice. Through you, Mr. Mayor, again, I'll reiterate because I think I have said this twice already. This was the this exact information was going through the audit committee when I was on it. I don't know about well, more recent time, and that's why it was very much noted by the chair that we were actually reporting um, the package in, in in three manners and actually perhaps um, being over generous in terms of informing residents what's there. Um, the range reporting is standard, uh, but it is not opaque really, the range reporting, when it's just done annually and it's done in a range. Yeah. I'd like the yeah. Governor's yeah. Officer to add to yeah. that, because we've actually had this in our reports in we've been doing all the years I've been on this council, so I'm not sure what the problem is, really. Governor's Officer. Just to follow up from Councillor Greco's um, question, uh, yes, I have spoken to the board chair, Councillor Greco, about the relationship. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm still, I'm actually more confused now from what I've heard from Councillor Lawrence than I was before. This was not proposed to us from officers, it was proposed to us from a councillor, um, it hasn't come as a direct recommendation in the officer's report or from the audit committee. I'm just not quite sure why we're considering uh, what is uh, an amendment to the annual report um, from a councillor amendment in the chamber to what is a very specific item. It, it hasn't been proposed in the writing of the annual report by our officers. I'm just very confused as to why we'll get some clarity, now. and I think this should finalise it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should, be, I should have been clear in my question. I'm not, I'm not quite clear why it wasn't circulated to all councillors as a, an amendment required um, for councillors to consider at the meeting rather than a, an amendment which one councillor was aware of. I don't think that's an unreasonable question. No, no, it's not um, unreasonable. And, and I, I just think would like to know because I think I'm, I'm hearing I wasn't circulated before the meeting and we're just hearing about it now via one councillor um, and not through a, an ordinary procedural process via an email or a memo saying there is an issue here with the report, we need to amend this. That's, it's just from a matter of good practice um, that I'm asking the question. Noted. But that's, that happens that's recently noted. here. Not, not from an individual councillor. Anyway. It would come to us no. as a memo. Thank you, councillors. <clears throat> we need a response to that? No. I think so. Yet? I think we do need a response to that. I think we're at three or four responses already. We've actually had this item included in all our annual reports as a noting item that's been omitted. No, that's not the point, Mr Mayor. With all due respect, that's not what Councillor McCarthy noted, and I don't think we have got an adequate response, so I would like one. How did it happen, I think, is the underlying question. Yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, it was through an officer um, asking for the and may I ask, um, just through you, Mr. Mayor, why those two are councillors and nobody else? I think therein lies the problem. I can answer that to a degree that when no, I. No, it's okay, Councillor Williams. I think we can move on. Thank you, councillors. If there's no further debate on the matter, I'll now put that to a vote. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you, councillors. Last item for consideration is a 6.8-2015-16 annual summary of Darabin Community Surveys. They're here for noting. Who wants to move that, councillors? Councillor Walsh. Happy to Councillor second. Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Walsh, you have the floor. Um, um, look, I'll be, um, look, I'll be fairly, um, I'll, um, I'll be fairly, I'll be fairly brief. Um, but the um, um, but the report um, but this um, report does um, um, does demonstrate that the um, community is um, um, uh, um, is um, um, still showing reasonable uh, satisfaction with council and it's um, and it seems to um, um, remain fairly consistent over the past um, over the past. Um, Mm -hmm. Four years, which is um, 
um, which is um, which is good. Um, which is good. Um, we were. Um, I I also note our um, the um, the satisfaction um, that we have from um, 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 from our um, from our um, co um, coal community and um, the and and the um, age, um, and the aging community. So demonstrating that our um, perhaps our most vulnerable residents are um, are satisfied with um, with council's performance in that line. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Lawrence, a second you wish to speak. Uh, just, uh, I just got one question before I speak, just through you to the officers. Um, <coughs> just in terms of the um, timing of this, this is the normal timing for reporting of this. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Please. Yeah. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, we we councillors were given a briefing on this tonight before the mm -hmm. meeting, and this information is now there. Um, I suppose. Um, I always encourage people, residents and everyone, to, to look at this um, satisfaction survey as they go through each year and look at the different areas, because not all of us experience all the services that uh, the Council offers. And so there's some, there are some extraordinary stories of very good services, and if you are accessing some of our age services or some of those services, um, you know what that's about, but if you're not, you don't. Now, it is, I suppose, with an election on, unfortunately, this information wasn't available earlier because I think this kind of information can in create an informed debate in the democratic space. And it's here, late, I suppose, but I hope um, the community does look at it. Um, yes, uh, we have some great high points. We also have some average points. And we also have some stresses around parking and planning and congestion and things. So this is a very informative document. Um, I remember when we didn't use uh, Metropolis and we had less accurate surveys, we had less involvement of, of coal community and it's good to see that this provider is still here and providing that level of information where we have got some confidence uh, they've gone through to the coal community as well. So I recommend um, the survey for uh, the community to look at. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. If there's no further speak, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, next item of considering is on item 7, consideration reports, I'm sorry, responses to notices of motion general business. There are none for that. Item 8, notices of motion. There are none. Urgent items, uh, Mr. CEO? Nothing. Item 10, general business. Nothing there also. Uh, item 11, petitions. Any petitions from councillors? Oh, I have a, a McCarthy. petition, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, I'll, I'll read it. It's a petition of 11 signatures. Uh, the petition reads, uh, <coughs> We, the undersigned community, call on Darabin City Council to do the right thing by our neighbour, Mrs A. Vaccaro of 73 South Crescent Northcote. Four years ago, Mrs Vaccaro brought to council's attention the damage that a council street tree was doing to the sewer pipe on her property. The tree's roots have now blocked the pipe. To fix this will cost Mrs Vaccaro thousands of dollars which she doesn't have and shouldn't have to pay. Mrs Vaccaro has, forced, has been forced to deal with an, exter an external insurance company on this issue, making it even more difficult to resolve the issue with Council directly. We, the undersigned, believe that Council should pay to fix this problem as it is due to a Council street tree which was pl planted after Mrs Vaccaro's sewer pipe was installed. We also call on Council to review the current use of external insurance companies to handle these issues on behalf of Council, so as this makes it challenging for residents, particularly non-English speaking pensioners, to stand up for their rights. There are 11 signatures and the request is, um, the motion is um, for a report to come back to the full Council in relation to this petition. Seconder. I second. Thank you for that. I'll put that to a vote in favour. That's carried. Thank you, Councillors. Any other petitions? Thank you, councillors. If there's not, uh, item 12, records of assemblies of councillors, uh, 12.1. Have someone move that, please. Yes. Move to Councillor Lee. Second, Councillor uh, Lawrence. All those in favour? That's carried. Item 13, reports by mayors and councillors. They've been circulated by the councillors. Those who have submitted those. Have someone move that, please. Move Councillor McCarthy. Second, Councillor Greco. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, councillors. Consideration of reports confidential. There are none tonight, Mr. CEO. No. Item 15, close of meeting. Thank you very much, councillors, officers, staff, and members.